In the last video, we talked about how to create a website or web application using Flask. We went over, you know, some basic authentication stuff, went over how to um, uh, create and manipulate a database, all that good stuff. In this video, we're gonna be taking it a step further and I'm gonna be showing you how to include Python in the front end as well as the back end using something called PyScript. This has been around for a little while, but it's kind of proper release only happened in the last few months. Uh, I've been meaning to do a video on this for quite some time and see as I did the video on Flask, I thought it'd be a good opportunity uh, to do this as well. But before we talk about that, let me talk to you about Tidio. Tidio is a customer relationship management tool which lets you increase sales, collect leads and provide excellent customer service. Even if you're not selling anything, Tidio can help to provide answers to questions your visitors may have or even assist those who just want to leave some feedback. Tidio provides a combination of live and automated support based on your needs. You can create chatbots to send programmable automated responses. So even if you're a small business without a budget for a support team or if you just want some help offloading answering some of the more frequently asked questions, Tidio has you covered. Their chatbots can be created with pretty advanced triggers too, such as on specific days and specific times, the detection of a returning customer, and when the user's cart has been abandoned. Installing it on your website is as easy as copy pasting one line of JavaScript code, or installing the Tidio plugin on sites like Shopify, WordPress, and Magneto. Once installed, you can customize the appearance to your liking, including custom branding, widget positioning, and language preferences. To start connecting to your customers today, head to tidio.com slash get slash Carbara, that's also in the description, to get started with Tidio for free. So long as you use the link, you'll also get 20% off a premium plan when you upgrade, so be sure not to miss out. That's tidio.com slash get slash Carbara to get started for free, then 20% off a premium plan with Tidio. So as you can see, I've created a Flask view for us to use. So this just has our slash view um, to actually load the HTML uh, page that we're gonna be uh, using. And then it also has a separate route that will make a little bit more sense uh, in time. But uh, if you want to be able to load Python files directly into the code itself, then you need something like this. Um, but I'll explain more about that when we actually get to it. And remember when you create a new view, always register the blueprint in the init.py. So in our static folder, or in our static, we're gonna create a new folder just called data in this case. And we're gonna create a file called analytics.py. We're gonna be um, doing some data analysis with our uh, thing today. This is just gonna be really simple. I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time in here. In fact, I'm going to copy paste it and just run through it. So what we're doing is we are loading a CSV for a file that we're going to pass into our function. We're creating a figure of a particular size. We're creating a line plot using Seaborn. And we are uh, doing some fancy stuff with the X ticks uh, because uh, matplotlib sucks. And then we're returning the figure back out. And that's all going to be very important when we build our uh, HTML file. So if we go into templates and now if we go into data and create a new file called view.html. And we're not gonna be using any of the other base templates or anything. We're gonna be doing this one completely from scratch uh, just to show you how this all works. So we can do our HTML tag here and then we can have our heads. It's probably good I typed this out actually. Actually, you know what, I might copy paste this as well because it's a lot of annoying links. So you can have a link, uh, rel style, uh, style sheet href uh, pyscript.net slash latest slash pyscript.css and this just allows, uh, this just imports um, all the CSS stuff for PyScript. Uh, so it has, you know, various views and all this and it, it all works like that. So that just imports that. And then we do script to first source um, with the PyScript JS as well. This just imports all the actual PyScript code, um, all the JavaScript code that it needs to run. So it's all uh, basic stuff. It won't work without any of that. Now we're gonna do the body and we're gonna do some Py configs. So this becomes available to us um, with uh, da, 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 whatever it's called installed, PyScript. <clears throat> and we're gonna specify some config options here. So we're gonna have our packages. So we need pandas and we need Seaborn. Seaborn will import matplotlib on its own, so we don't need to specify that. But this is basically, if you need any external packages and this is where you put them, and then when the page is loaded uh, in the venv 
that uh, PyScript creates, it will install these packages into it. And then if we want files, actual Python files in it, then we need to do a fetch like this. And we do files equals analytics. In our case, analytics.py. And this is why you need this um, file here because I couldn't figure out a way to make it work without a web server. Actually, it completely outright refused to do it without a web server, but it will make um, a request to slash data slash and then the name of the file. So we've got a root here, which is basically taking a file name and then we take our file name as a parameter. <clears throat> and then we use the send file uh, function, which is built into Flask here. And then we load the file that we want to load. So in our case, it's in static data and then analytics.py. Um, if it doesn't exist, it, um, I think PyScript will just throw some sort of error. But in this case, because we're actually specifying it here, um, then you know it will be fine to use. And then from there, we can actually use that file and import this plot into it, which is pretty nice. So once we've done that, we can get into the PyScript body. Uh, and then we're going to be doing from pyodide.http import open URL import analytics. And we're going to be getting our file uh, to analyze from uh, my file server. So I did this so I could show this off. And I'm fully aware um, that pandas.readcsv can accept URLs as well. I just wanted to use the open URL um, to demonstrate it, to show its uses, because uh, you might find uses for it uh, other ways. But on files.carbo.xyz slash resources slash by script slash this, I have my YouTube analytics data for January 2023. Feel free to have a look, I don't care. Um, I'm also <laughs> deciding to use one of my files just so I don't infringe any weird copyrights or anything. But this will actually download the file and then save it as, um, you know, our file in, I think it's a buffer or something, an IO buffer. And then we specify our fig, analytics.plot, and then we send in our file buffer in here. And then the reason we actually need to return the fig out and we don't do plt.show in here, for example, is because that won't work. You do actually need to use the display function. Uh, so we do fig and then target equals graph, which we'll come back to. And then append equals false. I'm not really sure what that does. It was just in the example. Uh, I think append equals false means it will replace it, not add another one if you're like doing something else, for example. And then we just do the rest of our stuff in the body. So we have our H1 and we are just got to call this analytics data January uh, 2023. And then we have a div section, which is going to be ID of graph, uh, and then that's it. So this graph and this graph match. So our target is saying um, what element to put it into. So it looks for an element with an ID of graph. It finds one, or it finds one. I went to say finds and found at the same time, and it came out really weird. Uh, but it finds one in this div, uh, and then it will put it in the div, which we haven't really stylized at all, but it doesn't matter. And that's all you need to do. Uh, so with that, we can go back. It might be still running. It is still running. I'm going to reset it just to make sure. We're, we're just in the same folder and everything. So, And I'm recording this straight after the other one. So if we do data slash view now, you can see it downloads Pyodide, it does the startup, does the thing. So you can see the actual element, the header element's already there. So it renders the page first. And now we've got a graph that is way too big. Why? Oh yeah, because I've zoomed it in massively, haven't I? <laughs> you see we have, oh, we actually have a label for it. Yeah, this is why it was being, it didn't um, separate these. It just had them all. I don't know why it did that. It doesn't normally do that, but whatever. So we have our dates and we have our time. So, wow, on the 7th of January, I've got a lot of views. And there's our graph. There's a picture of our graph uh, actually in in the in the web page, which is really cool. So that's just kind of a very basic example of how it can work. But this is pretty much all you need to know. Inside a PyScript, you can you know write all the Python you want. And using this files fetch and a web server, you can import 
um, entire modules if you want to. You can import Python files if you want to do your development in here and have you know the luxury of type hinters and, and checkers and all this, that, and the other. You'll be able to do it properly and just import your Python code in here and then just call it, which is kind of how I would use it really. Um, but it really depends, you know, if it maybe it's, well, I was going to say if it's closed source code, it's going to show up in the HTML anyway. <laughs> so there's no point in doing anything like that. You might as well just have it all on the show. Uh, but yeah, that is a very quick overview of how PyScript works. If you like the video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know. And maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions or you know any ideas of what you want me to do in the future, then make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so either by becoming a member or a patron. One pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where I show you how to create a chatbot, a really easy chatbot. Uh, for your website at all. With just one line of code, you can have a full chatbot. It's pretty cool. So I'll see you for that.